I'm going to tear down this HP G6 1000 series laptop. This is an AMD uh, APU series laptop. Um, this one works fine. Uh, screen was broken. So, not going to replace the screen even though it's pretty easy to do if you've got one of these and you just need to change the screen. Um, you can do it without taking the entire thing apart. If you get these plastic covers off, you can snap the bezel off um, and fish to the side to get to the the screen screws. Usually I take large parts out first. Let me go ahead and do that. Um, took the battery out and then take the main bay cover off. These screws stay in the cover most of the time. So you turn it until you hear it click, which means that the thread has exceeded the, the threading. And then you need a good pull. Sometimes a little bit of wiggle helps. But this is one of the tightest covers I've ever had to remove. The hard drive, it's got this little handle here that doesn't work. So what you're going to do is lift it up a little bit and get a hold of the sides. Don't lift it too much or you'll break the connector. One screw behind the optical drive. And it's actually labeled, it shows a picture of the, um, well, a picture of a disc, I guess. Um, looks like it's held in by an M2.5 by 8. That's probably going to be the main screw size that we see on the bottom here. Um, as uh, you'll know, if you start taking a bunch of laptops apart, um, a lot of times they'll use the same type of screw um, for one direction. Like, for instance, you'll have a lot of the same size screw for the chassis bottom, and then a smaller screw for the uh, wrist rest section down, and sometimes even a smaller or a different type screw, like a uh, galvanized screw for the uh, internals, like motherboards and daughter cards. Um, oh, by the way, these were M2.5 by 8s, approximately. Um, these two screws here look like M2 by 3s, same as here. So you can see a little bit of consistency here. The ones that uh, attach the very thin pieces of plastic to the uh, wrist rest section so far are M2 by 3, more or less. Little bumper here. If you're very careful, you can get it out without damaging it. I'm not trying to be careful. Almost. A little bit popped up. To, ah. All right. just a rubber stopper, which I think is stupid. Just, it just makes you not notice a screw. I don't understand why that's there. All right, let's take out the rest of the main chassis screws here. Here is a wide headed, it looks like about an M2 by I'd say it's actually an M2x2, two two. It's, it's pretty short. This is the SATA plug. It's just a bunch of pins that go to a board. Lose that and, well, you know, you can't hook your hard drive up. These little, what are these, MMCXs? These little um, coaxial radio cables, these uh, antenna cables, um, they snap on kind of hard and when you take them off you want to make sure that you don't pull on the cable because that's easily the weakest part of it. You want to pull as straight up as you can, but from the metal. These two screws that hold the radio in look like they're also M2 by 3s. Uh, so I'm going to place them with the other M2 by 3s. They're all, they're all the same. Now, you see these tabs here? This is going to get a little interesting. I'm going to turn this over and look at the keyboard. All right, normally with a keyboard, you've got um, these little tabs you can actually push to um, to make it pop out. And I like to use a spatula, or you can do this with a uh, with an X-Acto blade, but um, you can also really scratch up the plastic with, a, with an X-Acto blade. This is a, a flux spatula. Um, nice tool to have for disassembling laptops. What I'll do is I'll, I'll either use my fingertips, fingernails on a few screws, just to give myself a slight bit of upward 
tug, not enough to pull a key off, uh, or I'll use two spatulas. Now you can push on this tab on the top side to get these off, or, and this is one of the more interesting things, you can do the same thing from inside the battery compartment by pushing on, or pulling on these here. All right. Careful with this connector, because if you break it off, you might be out of motherboard. Very hard to replace. All right. Loosening off all these connectors, because when we go to take the wrist rest section off, we don't want to rip the cable out. These screws are labeled as M2.5 by 4. So you can see what I was talking about earlier. It's actually a different size going down from the wrist rest section into the uh, chassis bottom. Um, this looks like another M2x3 for the power button. That came out nicely. So I took out the two M2x3 screws, slide that over, break a fingernail lifting it out. Yeah, what am I doing wrong here? Well, one thing I'm doing wrong here is I'm not in the view of the camera. I can only fail when no one's watching. <laughs> and there it comes right off. Separate the board from the chassis. This USB board um, just has a little tab holding it in place. So you just pull the tabs out like you're pulling out a stick of RAM. There's one. Power jack dongle. Lift it a little bit so you can get a hold of the connector and the wires. If you pull by just the wires, you might break one. Way you go back and forth, comes right out. Lift that out. Um, common problem with laptops is these get broken in into the case. Um, that's one of the great things about dongles is it's the power jack on a cable. Um, instead of breaking a jack on the board, you've actually got a replaceable piece. Uh, but much more often it's these little plastic um, guides that hold it in that break. So, you know, if you got a, a laptop like that and you need to fix it, just you can either just hold it in and, and melt the plastic onto it or just fill in with some hot melt glue or something like that and, uh, you know, get back to work. All right, so we got two speakers up front. Careful with that connector. Not held in by anything. This optical drive SATA connector board is held on by three M2.5 M2 by fours, it looks like. The um, wrist rest section to chassis bottom screws. Same screw. So we'll prop M2, well that says M2 by three. And it is. Okay, good. So they've, they've actually been uh, sticking to their labeling. That's great. Another M2 by three over here. And one more M2 by three over here. Now I think if I unplug the LVDS cable, which has a little piece of tape holding it in, I think if I unplug that, I'll have access to the motherboard. Let's see here. All right, so I got the little piece of tape off. These LVDS cables tend to stick out just a touch on the side. There are lots of tiny wires, so it's really better to just push on the connector and, instead of pulling on the wires. Though LVDS cables are usually pretty cheap, it's a hassle to order one and wait for it and all that. All right, so this came out. No other cables holding it in. Close that a little bit so it's balanced. I'm gonna set that on the other section. Flip it over. Four screws to hold the CPU heatsink in, and then I think it's just one more screw for the fan. All right, one screw, which looks like an M. Huh, this looks like an M two by four. So that's a little different. That's going off to the side here. You can use a flat tip screwdriver, or if you've got a nice uh, sharp Phillips like this, take the edge of the Phillips head. And you can actually turn the flathead lock. So this board looks like it's in really good shape. 
All of the ports are really clean. There's no dust to be seen anywhere. Um, there was no dust in this thing. This is just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Almost got everything out of the chassis bottom. Um, only thing left is the lid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen the three screws on, uh, on this. I'm going to loosen the screws on the hinges. And then I'm going to hold the lid just to reduce the stress on the hinges and the threads while I loosen the screws the rest of the way. And these are M2.5 by 8s. Leaving one screw in on each side until I've got all of them out. Oh, actually, before I do that, let's get these untaped here. All right, there we go. That's free, and that's free. I don't know. You you might actually see the um, shatter in this screen. It it blew apart. Sometimes people bring computers in with busted screens and they go, oh, my, my daughter broke this, uh, she must have gotten in a, a rage and thrown it or something like that, but a lot of times it's just a light break or a little bit of, a little bit of flexing one way and they just, like a car windshield. Another M2.5 by 4, two of these. Now, there's a couple ways you could take these uh, bezels off. There, we got the two screws. That's not the only thing holding them in. There are little plastic tabs all around the edge. Now you can you can start prying up, and it'll start to pop out. Um, or you can, if it's really stubborn, which this one is not stubborn at all. If it's really stubborn, you can take your spatula, and or you know guitar pick or something like that, and just push in a little bit right along the seam. And it takes very little to get it to pop. If you're pushing too hard, you're probably about to break one of the little plastic tabs. And the bezel is off. These hinge cover caps, I don't believe they have part numbers, so I'm going to take the... Th this is a... Um, looks like a uh, nickel-plated screw. Uh, M2.5 by 3, M2, uh, yeah, M2.5 by 4. I'm going to set that, well, I'll set that here because I'm going to put it back on really soon. Um, and then the left side has two M2.5 by 3s, it looks like. Important to know because if you put M2.5 by 4s in there, you might make a little plastic dimple on the other side. Got two, screw, uh, two screws on the right hinge at the bottom, and if you look carefully on the hinge when you go to reinstall, they have arrows to point to the screws that get, uh, the holes that get screws directly in them. And then one screw on this side. Oops. Then these, we're continuing with the M2.5 by 3s. Then one up here, one up here. Don't pull the screen out yet. There's a little cable that goes to the webcam. I prefer to disconnect that first. Um, the other thing I like to do is get this untangled and untaped. So now hopefully the whole thing will come up with no resistance. There is resistance. Very little. Okay. Because a lot of times these get stuck to the lid, and if you're trying to save the screen, for instance, pulling on this uh, circuit board and uh, pulling on this back can really either distort the image or, or ruin the screen. Um, we're not worried about that in this case, but you know, just generally good practice. Note that this is actually touching the metal frame. That helps with grounding. Don't forget to put that on like that.
All right, the LVDS cable, 639-516-001. L little note here, um, always look that up and see if that's actually the screen assembly. In this case, I'm pretty sure that's actually just for the LVDS cable. Um, but you'll find, like for instance, near the bottom of the cable, they'll make a field replaceable unit out of the entire screen. And then they'll put one label on the cable. So then when you go to look up the cable and you think you're looking up just the cable, it's actually the whole assembly. Um, there's there's probably another part number underneath of this label, but if this if this FRU is right, then that's all we need. Two hinges, of course. Anytime you've got a broken screen, it's good to check the hinges. We got two screws, four screw holes, but of course only two screws, and these are M two by threes, which we've been getting plenty of. So, this, this hinge is not bad, it's really not bent or anything, there's a tiny, tiny bit of bend to it, but I'm not worried about that, especially with only two screws holding it. Doesn't really matter if it's bent, does it? Web camera, usually held on by glue, and you lift it up evenly so as not to bend the board, and you've got yourself a replaceable web camera. Don't know what the part number is. We'll have to look that up. It could be A045H4651206, or it could be that it doesn't have a part number. That happens a lot of times. One more item. Hard drive uses these, looks like M3s. I think it's M3x3. And um, this is actually the same thread as a desktop would use for holding the uh, optical drive or um, SSD. So this is, uh, I mean, those screws probably won't fit, but you'll see that this is actually the same thread. So when you look at this thread compared to any of the other threads, it's to notice it'll be different. Four of those, but these are not carriage type, so it doesn't have to be the original hard drive screws, just as long as it gets out of the way of the uh, mount. Some manufacturers will use screws with a little bit of a lip on it so that you put it in and slide it along a couple rails. This doesn't do that. Optical drive, uh, we don't typically take the um, these parts off only because um, these are rarely ever labeled right and it, these can be a real PITA to replace. All right, well I hope I covered everything. Um, I'll try and annotate it with part numbers uh, field replaceable units and so forth. Um, feel free to comment. Let me know if there's anything that I missed, anything you need clarification on. All right, that's it.